Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna talk a bit about drones. So specifically we're gonna talk about some uh, FCC versus CE drones. So what do I mean by that? If you have something like a Air to S like mine, or maybe you have a Mini Two or a Mini Three Pro, so or Mini Three. So what's gonna happen is if you live somewhere in like Malaysia or Europe, you're probably getting the CE version instead of the FCC version. So the difference is that um, the CE version has a weaker transmission power compared to the FCC version. So this will cause, especially when you're flying inside cities, um, towns where there's a lot of Wi-Fi interference, you're gonna see that the range is not gonna go very far. Now, how short of a range I'm we are talking about? Um, maybe if you have like my original Air to S, if you fly, if you don't do this mod and you fly inside a city, you're gonna fly maybe around one kilometer and then not even one kilometer before you reach one kilometer, you're gonna you're gonna see the signal starting to drop and cut off completely. So this is uh, an, a big issue for me, uh, especially if you're planning to fly a drone. You can see a lot of comments. I'm going to post here now inside Facebook group Why aku punya drone tak boleh pergi jauh Kenapa drone ni sampai sini je kan Beli mahal-mahal tak boleh fly jauh This is going to be the usual comment inside the Facebook group So uh, Today I'm going to teach you a hack uh, Actually I found it in the internet Inside a forum actually On how to do this hack To convert a CE to FCC um, transmission power inside your drone so you can fly further and the other thing is that I'm also going to teach you the step by step on how to do it and um, there are other ways that you can do it mainly the paid version via drone tweaks or drone hack but those are you, you gonna need to pay uh, I'm just teaching this one because uh, it's free and it works actually for I think the Air 2S uh, the Mini 3 Pro and uh, the Mini 2 uh, however, keep in mind there are a few prerequisites. Number one, it only works in on Android as far as I know of, and also you need the DJI, no original DJI RC N1 controller, not the RC, not the RC Pro. So you're gonna need the original controller. Now the process of installing is actually very easy. Uh, there's a link down in the description. It's gonna take you to the forum of Mavic Pilots. Then scroll down and click link to the APK. Now once you click, you just choose your Google account and then click on the package installer now this will start the process of installing the EPK or application on your uh, phone so usually it will say cancel or install but mine is cancel and update because I have installed this uh, software in my phone already so anyway just click on the install icon and then it will slowly install this uh, application inside your phone now to confirm the application install you can see there's a Mavic Air uh, to FCC application uh, this is the application but we'll get back to this application later now for now we need to open the official DJI um, app DJI Go app now connect the drone and the remote as we usually do now once it's fully connected go into the options and go under transmission and then scroll down to the channel mode here you can see to confirm whether you're in FCC or CE mode if you're in CE mode Basically, what it means is that the 90 decibels uh, level is the same as the 1 km level. Okay? So, the 1 km marker is the same as 90 decibel uh, marker. It means that you are in CE mode. Now, we are going to start the hacking process. What we need to do first is go to the back of the remote and then remove the connection from the phone uh, to the remote controller at the back. And then instead of connecting to the top, connect to the bottom uh, USB-C port of the remote. Now, once you remove your phone and then connect your phone to the bottom USB-C port, there will be a prompt. The prompt will say Mavic Air 2 FCC and then click OK, click Patch. It will say Patch successfully and then you can close this app. Now, go back to the DJI Fly app. At this point, reconnect. Uh, the USB cable from the phone back to the top connection on the controller. The drone at this point should immediately connect uh, to the DJI RCN1 controller. Now, to confirm that we are now in FCC mode, now you can see the 1 km mark is now above the 90 decibel line. If you see that the 1 km mark is now above and not at the same level of the 90 decibel uh, marker, it means that now you are in FCC mode. Now, if you have reached this point, it means that you have successfully uh, converted from CE signal to FCC. But keep in mind, uh, this connection only lasts as long as the drone is not switched off. 
So if you switch off the drone, let's say you switch off or change batteries, you need to do you need to do this step all over again because it will revert back to CE. Now, if you like this video so far and you appreciate my efforts and find this video useful, don't forget to help me out by leaving a subscribe. Now, we are going to start with the range test. Uh, as you can see right now, we are actually in CE mode. Uh, we are actually flying around Putrajaya. So we're gonna test uh, to see how far the performance in CE mode. So as you can see, the video is actually sped up because I don't want to waste you guys time on a long video. So we're just gonna see the performance. Now at this point, I'm flying at around the height of around 200 to 300 meters. And you can see at 800 meters, the signal starts to drop to 3 bar. However, at this point, I still consider the signal to be still stable as I'm not getting any cuts uh, in terms of video transmission feed. Now the problem start at around 1400 meters. As you can see, the signal drops to around 2 bar and it hovers around 2 and 3 and starts become choppy. Now at this point, I think I could have pushed further but I feel like this is already a risk because I'm already firing above water and the transmission is not very strong. So at this point, I decided to head back and end my journey with CE at around 1.5 kilometers in terms of range. Now we are proceeding the test. Like before, I'm flying at around 200 and then rising to 300 meters. But you can see the signal is even until 1.5 km where we started to have signal drops, it is still strong at full bar in terms of when you're using FCC mode. Really, the difference cannot be understated. Flying with FCC, it feels so much more stable. You hardly lose any signal. It feels like the signal is always stable. You're flying with either full bar or maybe four bars. At no point that the signal become 3 bar and yellow until it reaches around 3.5 km or 3500 meters. At this point, I felt that I could push further but because the battery is 50% and I'm flying above water, I decided to just go back to be safe. Now we are doing the test again in a highly densely populated area with higher signal interference and this time we have a ceiling height cap of around 150 meters. As you can see as I'm flying, I'm not even reaching 700 meters and I'm already getting 2 bars. At 700 meters and above, I'm already getting choppy signal, weak signal, adjust antennas warning and I totally cut out at around 800 meters. Now this kind of performance is a very disappointing uh, especially when you're paying $1,000 for a drone and you can hardly get to 1km in terms of range. However, this really shows that if the area is densely populated and then there's a lot of signal interference, high rise building, the CE mode will definitely struggle. Uh, there will be a big big difference between CE and FCC. Now we are repeating the test with uh, FCC mode. Again, like I said before, there's a height limit of 150 meters. Uh, this area is also has a very heavy interference and it's also another densely populated area. But using FCC, you can see that the flight is a lot more smoother. You can easily reach around one kilometer at this point uh, without losing any signal. However, in, uh, unlike Putrajaya, there's a lot more interference here, but we can easily pass the 1000 meter mark. So as you can see, we can fly, we're still not uh, getting any cuts in terms of our video feed. However, things start to get choppy at around 1500 meter. So 1500 meter, you can see that I'm having trouble weak signal adjust antenna. Now again, we're doing this test just like before. We have a height limit of around 150 meters. Uh, but this time I'm choosing to fly in a less densely populated area. Basically, there's no, not really a lot of people living here. It's just a palm oil plantation. So as you can see, when there's not a lot of interference, even in CE mode, you can fly quite far. At this point, I was able to get around 1.3 kilometers before the signal starts to drop to 3 bar. And there's, there was also a strong wind warning and I did not want to risk it. So I decided to turn back. Another reason I decided to turn back is because the signal was also getting a bit choppy in terms of video transmission so I decided not to risk it and just turn back. Okay, now we're repeating the test but this time we're using FCC mode. Uh, again, there's not really a lot of problem because there's, this is not really a densely populated area and there's not a lot of interference. You can easily see but the signal is still smoother on the FCC mode. As you can see, even as you are approaching around 1.4 uh, kilometers, there's no signal drop at all. Now, only at around 1.6 to 1.7 that the signal starts dropping. 
again there will be a strong wind warning uh, so I decided not to risk it and just go back so what do you guys think I think as a conclusion I think this is one of the most important mod that you're gonna do inside your drone I mean this surpasses the importance of things like ND filter landing gear I mean those are just you no know, additional stuff that you don't really need all the time I mean if you try I would consider you need it but at least you can crank the shutter speed so this is I think one of the most important mod that you need to do um, with your drone because if not you're gonna just fly around the meter you're gonna be frustrated with the range now as I've shown you before the difference can be quite significant especially when you're using the drone inside a densely populated area as far as cities I think the difference at Putrajaya is very very it's very large lah. one can go up more than 3 kilometers and the other can barely go 1.5 km before it starts to lose their signal um, also this also affects the FCC and the CE also dramatically affects when you're flying lower to the ground because when you're lower to the ground let's say you're flying only around 100 meters above so what's going to happen is that because uh, you're going to be exposed more to the signal interference um, from the cities and from the ground so that's going to cost you a lot of your range as far as your drone now comparing the range outside somewhere that is desolate there's not a lot of people not really a lot of experience the difference is not that much however there is still a difference and i would say that this is one of the most important mod that you need to do to the drone uh, so anyway if you find this video useful uh, don't forget to like and subscribe as usual lah, eh? help a fellow <laughs> service youtuber out especially i'm trying to reach 1000 subscribers before the mid, the mid of the second degree um, so if you find it useful uh, don't forget uh, any questions just leave it down in the comment section below anyway see you guys next time ciao